Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over some items and we're going to start with these um, canisters. And uh, these, I'm sure you've seen them at thrift stores everywhere. I know I have. And um, sometimes uh, they're very inexpensive and sometimes they, they're a little much. So uh, I've just been picking these up for a while. And at good, when I can get them at good prices until I built a set. So I've already uh, sprayed these with Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Finish uh, so that my paint would stick well. And now I'm painting them with a coat of uh, the color cotton. And uh, I'm giving it one good coat first. And once I let that dry, then I start to add some texture. Uh, but first I'm going to paint these lids and the lids because I want my uh, vignette here to have this farmhouse green in it uh, I'm painting the lids in the color farmhouse green and the reason for this color is I'm still kind of building a vignette uh, but also um, I had a friend who wanted a tv tray redid and she wanted the color uh, farmhouse green on it so that's why i'm kind of working with this color so i give these lids two coats of the color farmhouse green and then i will say that um even with adding some texture uh in here i'm adding uh some um baking soda about half and half in my paint because I want to start to build some texture on these um, on these canisters but I still have to give them a couple of extra coats and I don't know if you've tried this trick here but when you open a new jar when I can try, when I can remember it when you open a new uh, jar of paint if you'll rub some petro petroleum jelly around the top then you don't get it the lid doesn't stick um, but I don't always think of that but when I do I try to do that and uh, Dollar Tree has that petro petroleum jelly in um in a squeeze bottle so I just kind of keep it at my painting station and then I have it ready to do that when I can remember and here I'm just mixing this pretty thick because I'm going to really put some texture on this and uh or on these canisters so instead of brushing my next coats on then i just pounce them on and i'm using a brush that i've kind of worn out already anyway so you don't want a good brush for this because uh the combination of this pouncing and and uh the texture will ruin your brush so i have a couple of brushes that i use when i'm doing this and like i said I give it uh, this is my second coat here but only my first coat of texture and then once I let that dry I find that I still have to add uh, another uh, touch-up coat now I don't have to fully do another coat but it takes almost three coats here I don't know if it's because I'm doing this uh, pouncing texture effect or not but uh, for some reason or it could have been that uh the weather's been kind of muggy so who knows with paint what causes it to act a different way but for some reason i usually get better coverage with this paint than i'm i'm getting on these canisters but either way it didn't take very long because it, you got the flat side so these were very easy to paint and then once I've got these covered well and I let them dry well, then I'm just adding some of the crockery stamp stamps. And these are from IOD. And um, I really use these a lot. And um, I use them a lot on uh, jars that I want to make look like crocs uh, or, you know, for labeling jars. I think these are really a good, a really good set. So I'm just stamping one on each one and the reason I didn't really label these canisters is because I don't want to limit them. I know that when I buy a canister set it's never labeled exactly what I want to put in it so I like that um, I like it when they're not labeled. 
And then once I get these stamps on, this is, and this is stays on ink, and it really does stay on really well, but I still like to give just the stamp another coat of the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Finish just to make sure that it stays on well. And then I still label them uh, to hand wash only because you don't want to put these in the dishwasher. Now, I haven't painted the inside, so they are food safe, but... Uh, but I'm sure they're not dishwasher safe. And I really like how they turned out. And I've been using this farmhouse green a lot. And it's been selling well for me. So uh, I think these canisters will sell well. And then I purchased this little basket. And it had this little stamp on it. Which I wasn't crazy about. I like the color of it. But I didn't want to leave that stamp on there. So I'm going to be painting this also. And I bought this little basket for 99 cents, so I thought that was a really good deal. And I'm going to give this uh, a coat of the color um, Farmhouse Green also. And I just give this one coat because I don't really care if it has complete full coverage uh, because I'm going to be distressing this in the end quite a bit anyway. So I just gave the whole thing a coat of the farmhouse green and now I'm going back and uh, just putting the color cotton just around these little uh, rims. So I do the rim on the top and on the inside of the top rim and then, uh, and then I paint the rim on the middle of the basket. And, um, and then that kind of adds this color scheme that I'm going for so this will fit well into that little vignette. And with this white I also just do one coat because I'm not really worried that it uh, doesn't cover completely because again I'm going to be distressing it and uh, I actually prefer that it is kind of a haphazard coat. So once I get this little rimmed, these little uh, raised areas painted, then I'm going to paint just this little handle uh, in the color caviar, which is just a dull black. Now, I really would have preferred that this basket just just stay that stained color, but um, once it has that stencil on there, there's really not much you can do to get rid of that without uh, messing up the the finish so I didn't have any choice but to paint this one and then I just used that crockery stamp one of the crockery stamps on this one also and I did go over it with the clear wax just to protect that uh, chalk paint and now this is a little TV table that a friend of mine brought to me and she wanted me to paint it uh, and um, the lady that she wanted to paint it for had um, wanted this these colors or this farmhouse green rather so uh, that was kind of the reason that I chose this color scheme uh, so and like I said I needed I uh, have an area in the store that I'll be adding these to later anyway so I'm giving this whole uh, tray a uh, coat of the color caviar now the legs I give two coats um, because uh, I want uh, to leave the legs the color black and um, and I also painted underneath the TV tray just to make it look more finished and uh, and now I've added uh, the color cotton over the top of that and I don't know what happened to that footage but I gave it two coats of the color cotton and um and now i'm adding my um grain stripe stripes on it just to add that green in and i know i do these a lot but i really like grain grain stripes and they're so easy to do so um i just put three strips of tape on there and i just use regular dollar tree masking tape and I put them right to tape them right together side by side. Then I take the one in the center off, and that's my stencil for the first, uh, for the first stripe. And then once that dries well, and you do have to let that dry well, then I put uh, some more tape over the top 
uh, of that and kind of overlapping and however much you overlap onto your white is going to be the space between that stripe and the next stripe and then and then you'll just put another piece just right beside that leaving enough space to where you want your stripe to be and I know that makes no sense whatsoever um, but I, I will attach uh, in my description a, a very detailed video where I do the stripes on uh, on uh, burlap sacks and it makes it very clear how to do these but I'm not going into detail here um, but hopefully you'll be able to see how I put that down uh, and I'll try to zoom that in to help you see but like I said you put those first three pieces of tape down side by side just butt it up next to each other and then you remove the center uh, tape and then that is your uh, stencil for your first stripe and now as you can see here I've zoomed it in I am overlapping this stripe just enough to create a space between this piece of each of these pieces of tape and my next stripe so I'm just leaving a little bit of space there for my next stripe and that's the size that I want my next stripe and this is totally up to you how how wide you do your stripes but as you can see here I'm just kind of creating a space uh, so that um, I can uh, stencil those next lines and make sure you just get it pressed down well and then you're just gonna uh, stencil those little lines there that I have open and and then you'll pull that tape off and that's all there is to these green straps now you can go on with another strap on each side also if you want uh, but I'm just kind of stopping with the three here and you'll be amazed at how clean your stripes come out as long as you let this dry well and um, now I'm just going to add this stencil and I chose this stencil because I had a couple of viewers on the last TV table that I did say that they thought it would look good if I put this little windmill on the stripe. So I decided uh, since two people mentioned that that I would try it and I do think it turned out cute. And then once this was dry, I took it outside and I sprayed a clear matte finish uh, Rust-Oleum on it to seal that chalk paint in. And now I'm going to do a fall craft. And I know you find these all the time. Um, I find them at thrift stores and yard sales and, and just left over from uh, the year before. And I'm going to just turn this into some fall decor. It won't be Halloween decor. I don't want that face on there so I'm going to just take some air dry clay and uh, just kind of press that in there. Now you don't have to be perfect on this. Uh, I just want those filled in for the most part. Um, you do still see a little bit of that f face because like I said I wasn't extra careful. But I just kind of spread it on there and uh, let it dry. And then I'm just going to paint right over the top of it. Now, I just let this dry for a couple hours, and I know it wasn't fully dry, but it still works. You can paint over this before it's completely dry. And I don't worry that there's a little bit that shows in the texture, uh, because I'm going to be doing some layering on this, and I'm also going to be doing some texture paint. Now this is the color Gravel Road, which is a Dixie Belle color. I like to paint color, uh, pumpkins with a darker color to begin with and then just go lighter. And that will give you your dimension and color. Uh, so you just let this dry somewhat. I didn't let it dry really well, but if you, if you try to do it when it was really wet, then it would just make your paint muddy. But uh, I let this, this coat dry somewhat. 
And now I'm going to go over it with a haphazard coat of the color burlap. And I'm just keeping my strokes in the same uh, direction. And that's really the only rule here. Uh, you, you don't want full coverage at all. You want to leave some of that gray showing through because if you cover it all, then uh, you're taking away your dimension. And uh, so I've added a little bit of texture, some more of the baking soda to this paint. Uh, and then for my next coat, I'll also have some uh, baking soda in it as well. And so once this dries, then I'm gonna go over this with a haphazard coat of the color cotton. And uh, again, I've added some texture in it and I'm just being very sloppy with my coats because I, I want these to be thick. And if they drip a little, no big deal because pumpkins have their little knots and, and bumps all over them. So uh, the more texture you add here, the better. Now, I didn't mention that I didn't paint down inside this at all because it's not going to be showing. So, um, I just left that hot pink in there. And I've glued some uh, floral foam in the bottom of this. And now I'm just kind of building an arrangement. And I'm putting my greenery in here first. And then, um, I don't know what you guys think, but uh, sunflowers to me are very fall. So uh, I'm gonna be using a few sunflowers in here and the greenery. And um, so my plan was uh, to do the greenery and some sunflowers and then also do some white uh, blooms in here uh, to kind of bring that color into this because I'm gonna be putting this together with the rest of the items. Uh, but then I decided that um, I also wanted to add some lavender. And I know that's kind of an odd color to add into a fall, some fall decor, but I have some free, sweet friends who uh, do some decorating for fall, uh, actually heavy decorating of a business. And when they get done with their fall things, they bring them to me, the big beautiful garlands and I noticed that they put a lot of purple in them and the purple and the sunflowers were just so pretty together, especially with this uh, muted purple that I'm gonna be using in this. And then I also thought that that muted purple would be pretty with that farmhouse green. So um, it was kind of an experiment, but it, it worked really well, I think. So I just keep kind of tucking these in until I get the look that I want. And with these sunflowers, they're so large that uh, I only have to use a few of those. But um, I do like to do them in threes because um, I just feel like flowers look better in, in threes. Actually, a lot of items I think look better in threes. And I'm just taking some picks here and just cutting them apart. I'm not using any full pick. I'm just kind of cutting some apart. And these sunflowers here were in those flowers that were given to me. So uh, I didn't have to pay for these. But I'm really liking how, uh, how this yellow uh, goes with this white and green. And, and like I said, the the uh, lavender, I feel like, is just a, a really pretty extra touch. It really doesn't take long to do arrangements. Um, a lot of people are afraid of doing them, but you really just kind of uh, randomly place and just make sure that uh, your flowers are cohesive and you, um, and like I said, you don't, I don't like doing flowers in fours. Uh, and here I am adding that lavender, and you can see how it just adds a lot to this arrangement. And like I said, maybe it's not a color that you would generally put in a fall arrangement, but after I saw our friend do it, um, or bring me those flowers with the it in them, I just was really impressed with how that looked. So again, I'm just clipping some of these off this pick, 
and just uh, placing them randomly. I'm not overdoing it, just adding just enough to contrast those colors. And I feel like painting this pumpkin really made a big difference. Now, if you had just painted it a solid color, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look much different. But uh, when you layer these colors, especially when you add some texture, then it just changes it up completely. Now, I did mention that I cut that handle off. And then I just took some of that air dry clay and put in those little tiny holes also before I painted this. Now, I mentioned before that I'm I'm going to add some fall uh, fall items in here and there, uh, and probably a lot uh, because um, I need to get caught up on that. And I know this seems very early to some of you. But uh, when you craft and you have uh, a booth or a store, um, you have to get these items made very early. So even though it is early to decorate, it's not early to craft for them, especially if you need a large amount of items. So I'm just gonna keep, uh, keep adding them in. I'm not gonna do primarily fall but I am going to be adding it in here and there because I really need to get these finished. But I really like how this little arrangement turned out, and I think that that lavender really, really did pair well with that, and I think that that was the touch that that needed. Um, I don't thank you guys enough for all your encouragement and all your sweet comments. I just want you to know what a blessing all of you are to me. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.